everyone! This past January I was flying back to Los Angeles and the weather was really clear, visibility was awesome and I had my infrared camera with me and I was able to see the snow-capped Colorado mountains uh, in really crisp detail like never before and I'll show you that the um, previous video clip was just a teaser we're gonna zoom in um, but before we do that here's um, a graphic and I put the horizon um, uh, circles on there so we can see how far we should see if the earth is a globe and uh, <clears throat> You'll see that uh, we're going to be able to, to uh, see the mountains way out there. Now, before I show you these clips, let's review the first video, the first aerial video that I took with a different camera. This, this time I had my 4K camera with me, but the first aerial infrared video, uh, I'm going to try to denoise that and see how it um, you know how it performs so we'll we'll compare the two now the flight paths were not quite the same one was uh, slightly to the north of the other one um, and in January there was a lot of snow in the mountains so that helps quite a bit so let's dive right in This was the first aerial uh, video that I made after this, after I discovered that uh, infrared is such a powerful technology. And unfortunately, as you all remember, the window was fogged up a little bit. And uh, still, this was a HD quality uh, camcorder. And um, Good thing I kept filming because initially I thought I was seeing clouds in the distance, but then as I got closer, I noticed there were actually mountain peaks that had some snow on them. So let's try to denoise a part of this clip. So I've demonstrated this denoising tool. Uh, before incredible results look at that this interpolates across a few frames and I can control that but the results are pretty impressive however there's no substitute for high resolution so we'll see how these mountains look in 4k on a pretty clear day now let's take a look at the first clip denoised so here we go, and uh, it looks a lot more interesting. Actually, this is the raw, and then we'll show the denoised uh, clip in a second. So yeah, look at all the graininess. There's the mountains. See those? Wow. So late March, some of the snow had melted. The visibility was sort of okay. Um, but yeah, that's what really got me excited. Look at that. Wow. Now here's what it looks like denoised. It's cleaned up quite a bit. Wow, look at that. Ooh. There we go. Ah, there's the mountain. That looked interesting when you zoom in and out because it's interpolating. It looks like there is a rubber sheeting phenomenon. There's those mountains way out there. Pretty cool. Now here's clip number two. Um, different sequence. So this is the raw footage. There's the mountains. And... Uh, I'll uh, denoise this short clip here in a second. So here we go. Wow, look at that. Yeah, love it. Pretty, pretty awesome. 
so so here we're we're zooming from somewhere south of Phoenix now here's clip number three and now we're a little bit closer maybe we've crossed into New Mexico look at that Ooh, it's kind of jumping around I don't know what happened Now, here's the Colorado Rocky Mountains, uh, filmed on January. So we've seen the flight path already a little bit higher than the previous one, but the, um, the results are incredible. Let's have a look. scenery folks unbelievable now let's apply noise reduction to this video clip and see how it comes out here we go look how clear it is so this is slightly closer to the mountains um, look at that unbelievable look at the detail man it was it was a little bit frustrating because I had to turn my body and kind of film at an angle through the window looking back and um, those dark uh, squares on there I identify what those were um, they are water ponds next to uh, Snowflake Arizona and we're looking down at about five degrees so we're about 50 miles away given our um, altitude 
So we're approaching Phoenix and looking out over the Navajo Nation towards Colorado. So yeah, look at the mountains. It was a really clear day, better camera. Uh, didn't have that haze that I encountered last time. And um, it helps to have the snow um, on top of the mountains because it reflects the near infrared. So we're filming a near infrared, 940 or 950 nanometer uh, infrared filter. But yeah, look at that. Wow. Just incredible. A world of difference from my first aerial infrared clip. Just incredible, folks. Just incredible. So here we're kind of approaching uh, Phoenix. We're just east over the mountains. And uh, I'm trying to also look forward to see what, what, what's visible. And uh, yeah. Look at that, just peeking over the wing. You know, there's so many factors when you fly. It's like seat position, weather, obviously, flight path. And sometimes things just don't come together. But this time, they came together pretty good. I was pleased with the clarity and uh, the flight path. It would have been nice if they would have flown a little bit farther. But... Yeah, that's the way they flew. Yeah, look at those mountains in the distance. Now, there would be more mountains out there, but infrared gets absorbed eventually, and, um, you know, by the haze, and it just looks black. Um, so, but yeah, this is incredible. Wow, did you recognize those small peaks on the ground? We saw those in the other clip, too. So anyway, here we just passed Phoenix, and we're kind of looking north towards the Grand Canyon. Um, north Rim, that's North Rim right there. And we can see way beyond. And snow-peaked mountains way in the distance. Incredible. So the world looks incredibly flat when we look from above. So one of the challenges is to identify a distant target. Here it's easy right we got the mountains and sort of know the altitude and we can do the calculations uh, but sometimes it's not so easy but we can see beyond the horizon um, so before i let you guys go here's some uh, incredible imagery and clips i obtained in november of 2019 these are one of the clearest and i uh, captured these with uh, a DSLR camera. Have a look! Because of the enhanced contrast due to snow, we can tell those are mountains, but if that wasn't the case, look at that green line. I bet you most of us would have thought 
that's the edge of the earth, um, the horizon right there. But it really helps to get that contrast uh, in the darkness uh, so we can see farther out. Isn't that incredible, folks? Yeah, this is amazing. Now, from all my studies from the air, um, I've gotten into a 3D analysis so I can separate, um, you know, the mountain peaks and figure out what's behind. Um, and um, also use parallax and photogrammetry and uh, from all my studies, I've come to the conclusion that uh, this is what the surface appears to look like. Yeah, so in that inset, um, we see the observed surface in black, right? It kind of goes out way in the distance and then appears to roll up at the end. And I believe that's due to refraction at low grazing angles. But look at the theoretical, it should constantly curve away. But that's not what we observe, and we observe that in NASA imagery. We observe that in, uh, you know, a lot of high altitude, um, you know, missions. And the higher we go, the more strange it appears, because we're seeing farther and farther. So one model overtakes the other one rapidly. But the flat earth model has this phenomena at the edge, it does roll off quickly. Um, and so it's a very strange reality. And um, science um, just creates models to explain this. And their explanation is that light curves um, from the surface towards the aircraft um, as it goes um, to higher elevations where it travels faster, which makes sense, except that's not really what's happening. Um, there's a bunch of anomal anomalous things out there. Uh, but yeah, in science we just create models and we try to curve it the data and try to prove that there is certain refraction occurring, you know reconcile our models so I think that's not good science but um, I'm planning on dealing really you know diving deep into all this and the math um, I'm gonna stop doing some of these quick videos um, soon and I'm gonna try to change my style to more of an educational style because I have a lot of information present on curved space time and other stuff just incredible stuff folks i bought a theodolite and i have some incredible new evidence to present so make sure you guys subscribe and thank you to all that leave comments and um, have helped me uh, and motivated me by their comments so thank you and uh, have a great one folks god bless